Hello and welcome to the Osteoarthritis Action Alliance Lunch and Learn webinar for August 21st, 2024. Thank you for joining us today and thank you to the current Osteoarthritis Action Alliance sponsors shown here who help support our work, which includes the monthly Lunch and Learn series. Today's presentation is a companion to our January 20, 2024 Lunch and Learn when Lee Callahan presented Disparities in Hip and Knee Osteoarthritis Prevalence and Outcomes. So if that topic is of interest to you, you can look for the recording on our YouTube channel. Today, we are very pleased to have Dr. Ernest Vina presenting. Dr. Vina is an Associate Professor of Medicine in the University of Arizona College of Medicine. He joined the University of Arizona College of Medicine and Division of Rheumatology in 2014. He is also currently the Division's Rheumatology Fellowship Program Director. His interests include racial and ethnic disparities research in musculoskeletal and rheumatic diseases, clinical osteoarthritis investigations, clinical manifestations of systemic lupus erythematosus, and patient treatment preferences research. He has received funding from the Rheumatology Research Foundation and the National Institutes of Health. He has authored numerous publications in rheumatology, internal medicine, and health services research journals. The title of today's presentation is Disparities in Hip and Knee Osteoarthritis Management, Exploring the Evidence and the Contributing Factors. Welcome, Dr. Vina. Um, thank you, Katie, for that um, kind introduction. Um, and I uh, thank you also for inviting me uh, to give a talk uh, today. Um, and good morning to everybody in the West Coast and good afternoon um, to those who are on the East Coast. Um, and um, I do not have any relevant financial relationships to disclose. Um, so as um, Katie mentioned, uh, several months ago, Dr. Lee Callahan gave a talk on racial and ethnic disparities in the prevalence and outcomes of patients with osteoarthritis. Um, and um, these are actually some of the um, her findings. Um, we know that the prevalence of osteoarthritis is much higher in African-Americans than in whites. And while the prevalence of osteoarthritis in Hispanics is not quite well known, it has been estimated that up to 22% of Hispanics have arthritis, of which osteoarthritis is the most common. Um, and the prevalence of activity limitation, work limitation, and severe joint pain tends to be much higher among racial and ethnic minorities than among non-Hispanic whites. And racial or ethnic disparities in the patient's experience of pain and other symptoms related to osteoarthritis could be due to differences in the use and prescription receipt of various osteoarthritis medical treatments. At the American College of Rheumatology and the Arthritis Foundation um, as well as the Osteoarthritis Research Society International, and even the um, European League Against Rheumatism have all developed and published guidelines on how we should be managing patients with knee and hip osteoarthritis. Um, all of these guidelines recommended that all patients with these types of osteoarthritis be part of a regular exercise regimen and that they'd be referred to physical therapy as indicated. These guidelines also all recommended the use of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or NSAIDs, including non-selective and COX-2 selective NSAIDs. And while the benefits from acetaminophen may be mild, um, these guidelines also recommended the use of acetaminophen or lower extremity osteoarthritis. Uh, these guidelines, however, did not recommend the use of non-tramadol opioids for long-term therapy among those with knee and hip osteoarthritis. These guidelines also recommended the use of various topical therapies, 
including capsaicin and diclofenac gel. The use of hyaluronic acid um, intraarticular injection is a little bit controversial um, and is actually not recommended um, fully by the American College of Rheumatology. Um, however, um, intraarticular corticosteroid injection has been recommended by all these uh, guidelines. And when all else fails and all of these pharmacologic um, and non-pharmacologic therapies have failed, then they all recommended joint replacement surgery. Now the evidence of racial and ethnic disparities in the use of knee and hip joint replacement surgery in this country is robust. Studies have found that African-Americans and Hispanics in general were significantly less likely to undergo joint replacement surgery than whites. Um, for example, this was shown in a US Medicare data study uh, from 1980 to 1988, in which they found that white men were about three to five times more likely to undergo knee replacement surgery than African-American men. And using US Medicare data from 1991 to 2018, they found similar findings and that they also find that these disparities in care were widening. Uh, Jones and all conducted a very similar study using a national VA database and also found these racial differences in joint replacement surgery um, utilization. And while these earlier studies were actually criticized from primarily investigating uh, people who are older, uh, Bang and colleagues actually conducted a study using a na nationwide inpatient sample that had a younger population. And they found that the total number of knee and hip replacement surgeries increased from 1996 to 2005, but African-Americans and Hispanics were significantly less likely to undergo joint replacement surgery than whites. And in the recent uh, American College of Rheumatology Convergence Conference, a systematic review was actually conducted and presented by Crowell and colleagues, and they found more than 90 studies which found uh, similar findings of racial and ethnic disparities in the utilization of joint replacement surgery. However, the evidence of racial and ethnic disparities in the use of non surgical treatment for osteoarthritis is less robust. A few years ago, Rays and Katz conducted a literature review on racial and socioeconomic disparities in the management of osteoarthritis. And these are some of their findings. Um, they concluded that African Americans and Hispanics compared to whites were more likely to receive non-selective NSAIDs rather than cox selective NSAIDs. They were also less likely to receive opioid medications. However, the authors did not conduct a systematic review and there was minimal information on the effects of social demographic and clinical factors on observed differences. So therefore our research group conducted a systematic review to examine race and ethnic differences in the use of various pharmacologic treatments for osteoarthritis and um, I will be presenting to you our particular study findings. So we found multiple studies that investigated racial and ethnic differences in the utilization of oral non-selective NSAIDs, as well as COX-2 selective NSAIDs. Um, some of these studies also differentiated between prescription versus over-the-counter oral NSAIDs. Many of the studies found that non-selective NSAIDs were more often used by African-Americans than whites. This was based on prescription use data from North Carolina, outpatient prescription data from a national VA database. And some of you may be familiar with the Osteoarthritis Initiative Study or the OAI study, which recruited patients from the Midwest and the Northeast. And the OA studies 
also found similar differences, racial differences in the use of NSAIDs, uh, specifically over-the-counter non-selective NSAIDs. And these racial differences in the use of these non-selective NSAIDs persisted despite adjustment for patient social demographic and clinical characteristics. A few studies though have varying results. Um, in a large administrative data survey, race difference in the use of NSAID was only found in one study time period from 1992 to 1994, but not from study time periods 1989 to 1991, or from study time period 1995 to 1998. In a survey of Medicare beneficiaries who resided in Pennsylvania, they found an opposite finding. They found that African Americans were less likely to report using prescription oral NSAIDs in comparison to whites. Other studies showed no race differences in the use of self-reported use of non-selective NSAIDs including more than 200 osteoarthritis patients from North Carolina and a survey of clinical trial study participants recruited primarily from North Carolina. A few studies actually evaluated um, ethnic differences in the use of oral non-selective NSAIDs. Um, our research group in particular conducted a cross-sectional survey of Hispanics and non-Hispanic whites with knee and or hip osteoarthritis in Arizona. And we found that Hispanics were more likely to report use of prescription oral NSAIDs than non-Hispanic whites. However, Hispanics were also less likely to use over-the-counter oral NSAIDs in comparison to non-Hispanic whites. And other studies had similar results including Dominic and colleagues' study of prescription data from a national VA database, and Koja et al. study of medical records nationwide. And the ethnic difference that was observed persisted after adjustment social for social demographic and clinical characteristics in Dominic's um, study, but not in the other studies. Um, we found four studies, or more than four studies actually, that evaluated uh, the use of COX-2 uh, selective oral NSAIDs. And several of these studies found that COX-2 selective NSAIDs were less often used by African-Americans than whites, including an evaluation of VA prescription data in North Carolina and other regions nationwide, as well as using data from the OAI and the race differences persisted after controlling for social demographic and clinical factors. A few other studies that have found no race differences in the use of COC-2 selective NSAIDs for OA, including a study of people with self-reported arthritis living in Alabama, a survey of veterans receiving osteoarthritis care, as well as a, an evaluation of Medicare beneficiaries living in Pennsylvania. Uh, several studies also evaluated uh, race differences in the use of acetaminophen for osteoarthritis. There was no difference in the prescription of acetaminophen between African Americans and whites in a study of VA prescription data in North Carolina, as well as a survey of prescription receipt of knee osteoarthritis patients nationwide. Acetaminophen use that was more commonly reported by African Americans than and non-whites, than whites in a study of osteoarthritis um, initiative study participants with and without radiographic knee OA. Several studies investigated race and ethnic differences in the use of various different topical therapies, but very few actually evaluated specific uh, topical therapies. Um, and in Herman and All's study of New Mexicans, for example, uh, they found no differences between Hispanics and whites in the use of topical herbal rubs. And in Katz and colleagues' study, African-Americans and Hispanics were more likely than whites 
to use complementary alternative medicine-based topical agents. Uh, several studies also looked at the use of intraarticular um, injections for osteoarthritis, um, more specifically for knee osteoarthritis. And no race differences in receiving intraarticular corticosteroid and hyaluronic acid injection was found in a study of OAI study participants, as well as a survey of osteoarthritis clinical trial participants from North Carolina. However, African Americans were less likely than whites to report receipt of corticosteroid or hyaluronic acid joint injection among OAI study participants who had previously received a joint injection. And African Americans were also less likely than whites to report knee, but not hip joint injection among osteoarthritis patients in a tertiary center in North Carolina. And the race differences in both studies persisted after adjustment for patient social demographic characteristics. Several studies looked at race differences in the use of opioids among those with osteoarthritis, and most of them found no race differences in the use of this particular treatment for OA, including a study of community dwelling adults with arthritis living in Alabama, a study sample of people living in North Carolina, a survey of osteoarthritis clinical trial study participants from or near North Carolina, a study of Medicare beneficiaries, as well as among OAI study participants from the Midwest and the Northeast. There was also no ethnic differences observed in the use of opioids among those with osteoarthritis. In a pharmacy database study um, from the Northwest, our survey study in Arizona, and a study of medical records or physician reports from multiple states. A few studies had different results, however. Um, in a study of VA pharmacy database in North Carolina, African-Americans were less likely to be prescribed an opioid compared to whites. And in a national study of medical records, African-Americans had a higher likelihood of receiving an opioid prescribed by primary care providers. Um, however, this race difference was no longer significant when adjusted for various patient, physician, and practice-related characteristics. So the following are the summary of our findings. African-Americans and Hispanics were more likely than non-Hispanic whites to use prescription NSAIDs for osteoarthritis. However, compared to non-Hispanic whites with osteoarthritis, African-Americans and Hispanics with osteoarthritis were less likely to receive a prescription for COX-2 selective NSAIDs. There were minimal to no significant race or ethnic differences in the patient reported use of acetaminophen, opioids, as well as intraarticular corticosteroid or hyaluronic acid injections. However, there's limited evidence to suggest that African-Americans may be less likely than whites to receive opioids and intraarticular therapies in some osteoarthritis patient populations. And um, at the very top yeah, there is actually um, our manuscript that was published um, based on our systematic review findings. And I'd be happy to answer questions. Great, thank you so much for that presentation, Dr. Vina. As, as he mentioned, uh, we do have some time for a question and answer. So if you have a question for Dr. Vina, feel free to type it into the chat and I will read it aloud. Um, I know that these studies that you focused on were based in the US. Do you have any insight into how um, these results compare to research that's been done on um, ethnic and minority disparities in other countries? Um, so what I can tell you is that there's 
very limited um, uh, studies that looked at race or ethnic differences in other countries, I think for various reasons, um, in that um, how we define race or ethnicity may actually vary by country. Um, so some of the differences or disparities in racial or ethnic um, outcomes and prevalence of osteoarthritis may actually differ based on um, the country's definitions of race and ethnicity um, and how in the home, it may also differ based on the level of heterogeneity and homogeneity of their population. So that's why it makes sense to really focus on racial and ethnic disparities in osteoarthritis and the use of these various treatments in this particular country um, based on how we define race and ethnicity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. That's that's a good point. And I'm, I'm just curious to hear your interpretation of these results in the setting of, of clinical care. So how, how would you translate these results for clinicians and what do you think they mean for um, treating patients um, equitably? Yeah, so uh, I think um, it's a matter of increasing awareness of these known race and ethnic differences um, in um, in patient care, um, and uh, in medicine, we try to do our best to um, not be overly influenced by um, patient race or ethnicity. Um, and it's a matter of personalizing the care of osteoarthritis patients, but also realizing that perhaps that there are certain types of biases um, by certain providers, whether it be implicit or explicit bias that may influence their care. Uh, but I think the first steps in some clinicians would be um, knowing and be aware of these potential uh, differences in care. Mm -hmm. Yes, great, thank you. And um, one question I had, which again, I understand maybe outside the scope of your research, but I'm curious, um, you know, most of the results you shared were focused on surgery and pharmacologic interventions. Do you have any insight into racial or ethnic disparities and um, referrals or use of physical therapy or physical th um, physical activity? Uh, yes, uh, that, that, that was not the focus of our systematic review, but there's actually some evidence out there that there are racial and ethnic uh, differences um, in physical activity among those with osteoarthritis. Um, there's evidence that African-Americans and Hispanics are less likely to be utilizing um, exercise and to be uh, um, uh, being involved in moderate or vigorous physical activity for osteoarthritis. Um, and there's also some evidence to suggest that physical, there may be some race differences in referral for physical therapy, um, but uh, the evidence was is, is a bit limited as well. And they're primarily, of, and of course they're based on observational studies, just like these other studies. Mm -hmm, but, but it sounds like there are those disparities. So again, kind of educating clinicians and patients as well um, to make sure they are getting what they need. Yes, absolutely. Uh, we have a question in the chat about insurance. Um, so the um, participant says, I wonder if medical insurance has an effect on these disparities. Perhaps the socioeconomic data adjustments covered insurance type um, to rule insurance out. That is a possibility. Um, and uh, some of these studies that I actually presented um, appropriately adjusted for patient uh, social demographic characteristics. Um, and you know, insurance um, access is, or type of medical insurance is a type of access to care. And, and certainly if certain populations are not able to access uh, medical insurance or even uh, access to a provider, then that can certainly uh, influence whether or not they will receive uh, various different types of osteoarthritis um, treatments. Um, I mean, in particular, for example, the intraarticular injections um, may not be easily accessible for some who may have uh, limited 
or no medical insurance. Thank you, Dr. Vina. Uh, I'm going to pause there and uh, launch a poll, um, see if there are any other questions that come in, and uh, then I will announce uh, next month's presentation. So if you have any more questions, feel free to type those in the chat, and um, we will read those aloud. Um, Next month on September 18th, we hope you'll join us for our talk titled What We Know and Don't Know About Physical Activity and Knee Osteoarthritis, which will feature Dr. Daniel Kenta White. I don't see any other uh, questions coming in, so uh, we will end it there. Dr. Vina, any final thoughts? I know. Um... No, not much, but again, thank you for inviting me to give this talk and presenting our study findings. Thank you so much, Dr. Vina. I hope everybody has a great rest of your day. Okay.